everybody this is julian or you can call me jp and i'm representing jp fitness and today we're going to talk about everyone's favorite topic how to get bigger calves this video is mainly addressing again how to get bigger calves and not nothing athletic so if you're looking to increase your vertical or do something other than just get bigger calves i would recommend doing those actual movements so if you want to get a better vertical jump then you need to do vertical jumps um specifically targeting the calves in this sense uh, isn't really going to help you too much your calves will get work doing other movements like that but let's get started the calves are made up of two muscle groups and that is the gastrocnemius or otherwise called the gastroc and the soleus and i don't know any other names that people call the soleus they are best trained with high frequency if you are just starting out and you never trained calves before you want to train them at least twice a week the reason why it's higher frequency with the calves is because they are a very stubborn muscle group. You always use them when you walk, when you jump, when you run, whenever. They are used all the time. For, so for them to see some type of overload, you have to train them frequently. So for beginning users or beginning exercisers, never done calves before, twice a week. Uh, for advanced users, three, four, or five times a week. If you're not going crazy with supersets or drop sets, I would say four or five times a week. If you are, having pretty intense calf workouts, just stick to three. But again, better frequency, no less than that. The functions of the calf muscle. They, the calf, when you stand on your tippy toes, that is what the calves do. It's called plantar flexion. You are planting your foot in the ground and you are standing on your tippy toes. Also, the gastrocnemius, it helps with knee flexion and also bends your knees. So people think that the calves only get you to stand on your tippy toes. No, the gastroc or gastrocnemius also helps you flex your leg. Now, how do I train them? The gastrocnemius is primarily targeted on straight leg calf raises. Why? Because it attaches, it originates at the femur. So when you bend your leg, you are taking it out of the movement. So again, straight leg calf raises, if you want, uh, if you want to specifically target the gastrocnemius. The gastrocnemius is, when you're looking at a calf, like if you look at someone's calves, you see that kind of shape or the outside of it. The, the more superficial part of the calf, the calf, the part of the calf that's closest to the skin, that's the gastrocnemius. The soleus is underneath that. So you really can't see the soleus from the outside. You see the gastroc when you first see a calf and it is kind of like that meaty portion of the calf. So again, straight leg for it, it's the meaty portion of the calf. Okay, well, when you're working out, you may ask, well, how do I do it? What, what are the weights? What are the uh, rep schemes? The gastrocnemius is primarily made of fast twitch muscle fibers, which means that it responds best to heavier loads and kind of like an explosive type movement. So what I would recommend is you can even go as low as five reps. I wouldn't go lower than five reps, maybe like a five to 12 rep scheme, anywhere between five to 12 reps failure. So put a weight where you fail in that rep range. And on the concentric portion, you want to explode fast. Control it, I'm not saying have a bad range of motion, but you want to go fast. So again, five to 12 reps. That is how you primarily target the gastrocnemius. So straight leg, explosive, and heavier. You Remember, you can go to other rep ranges. I don't want someone to hear me and say that I didn't say that to go outside that rep range. Sometimes you want to switch it up and may, you may want to go for higher time under tension, but this is what you should primarily do for the gastrocnemius. Now the soleus, like I said before, it is underneath the gastrocnemius. So when you're looking at someone's calves, you cannot directly see it. Um, it's underneath. Uh, the soleus works primarily when the leg is bent. So when you're doing a seated calf race, soleus is the prime mover in that. The gastrocnemius is pretty much completely taken out of the movement when you do a seated calf race. It isn't the really meaty portion of the uh, of the extra of uh, the calf raises. It's not so of the calf. So when you see someone's calf, they got huge calves. It's probably they got a huge gastroc versus the soleus. Now the soles does help get bigger calves. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't train them, but again, now onto my next point, which kind of backs this up, is the soleus is made primarily of slow twitch muscle fibers, which means it responds best to a longer time under tension, more of kind of like an endurance muscular endurance workout. So if you train the soleus heavy all the time, it's not you're not going to see a real good response to it. It's almost like the abs in a way. The abs you don't you you definitely want to train them to be strong. You don't get me wrong, but you're not gonna see a, a big increase in size or definition if you train the soleus heavy. You wanna train them for, the set should be primarily a minute to 90 seconds or like you know a minute and 30 seconds is what you wanna aim for your target time under tension. So that's the reason why you have to train it like that because it's primarily made of slow twitch muscle fibers. Um, so what I would recommend in training for th this scheme, like for 
you, you know all this already, so you may be asking, well, what do I do? How do I train them? What do I set up uh, for my workout? What I would recommend is, let's just say someone's, you've done it for a little bit, but you don't know exactly where to go. You're like an intermediate, maybe even advanced. Let's just say you have three days a week. The first day I would do a straight leg calf raises. You can do maybe like a four or five drop set. You don't want a, a, a ton of volume. You can go a lot of volume if you want. Perf I prefer not to do a ton of volume. I'd rather have higher frequency. If, you, if your workout is like 15 to 20 sets on calf day, you can't do that four or five times a week. You, I wouldn't recommend it. You, that's, that's way too much. You can do a lot of frequency, but you don't want to do that many sets at one time. I just like the intensity to be, to be high. So what I would recommend is maybe do a straight leg calf raise, do five sets, but each set is a four drop set. So for example, the first set, you put a weight on there where you fail around eight reps. Then take off some weight so you fell around eight reps again. Then take off some weight so you fell around eight reps with no rest at all in between. Then take off weight so you fell around eight reps again. That's a four drop set. And then you take your rest period and you do that for five sets. So that's going to be fairly intense and you're going to feel an extreme burn. That's how I would do that maybe day one. Day two for a Solis, what I would do is maybe set a timer. Set a timer for a minute 15 or a minute and a half and pick a weight so that during the entire minute and a half you are just you are, you are cons doing consistent reps. For the Solis, again, I would go slower on the positive and the negative. Just come slow up, slow down, control the end. No explosive. It's a slow twitch, so no explosive on that. So I'd go for maybe uh, set the timer for a minute and a half and just rep the entire time. You're going to, again, you're going to feel a bad burn, but that's really getting that muscular endurance of the Solis. Now, day three, you can kind of switch it up completely and do like a, a superset. What you can do is do a uh, four or five sets, do pick a weight that's r around 10 reps, maybe max. And this one, pick a weight that's around 20 minutes rack, uh, max. This would be straight leg, this would be bent leg. What you can do is for each set, you're just gonna do four or five sets. It's not a lot, but it's gonna be intense. It's just do a drop or keep going back and forth. So max reps, no rest, max reps, max reps, max reps, max reps, no rest in between either of them until you can't get one rep of each. Until you go and you're just like, okay, I'm not even getting a good rep. When you can't do any more good reps, not bad reps, good reps. Um, then, then that's when I would stop. So again, you're supersetting these two. When you can't do one rep, that is one set. That may last a minute and a half. You just do four or five sets of that. The intensity is high, the frequency is high, the volume is not so high, but again, that's the way that I would train them primarily to see growth. Now, one thing I want to know on form is please, please, please do not be the person in the gym that does this. I don't know if you can see my feet. I don't think you can, but you, you can get the way that I'm going to be moving. Don't do this. Don't be bouncing up and down, barely moving, barely moving. That's not how you want to train the calves. For your gas rock, again, on the positive portion, you want to explode, and then you want to slowly control it down. When you're at the top portion of the movement, Think about driving your heel into the back of your leg. So when you're, when you're on your tippy toes doing calf races, you really want to drive the heel up. Think about the heel instead of the toes. Really try to drive that heel to the back of your calf. That'll help you get a uh, maximal uh, contraction of the calf. Now on the bottom, you really want to you want to flex your tibia, your tibia muscles, which means point your toes to the sky so that you get maximal lengthening of the calves. Again, you want to go up and then down. You don't want to do this. Don't just bounce up and down. That's, that's what I always see with the calves. You're going to feel immense burn if you do it the way that I told you, but that's how you want to train them. Again, if you like this video, video, please like, share, and subscribe. Share it to your Facebook. I'd really appreciate it. If you like these videos, I also have a Facebook. It's Muscular Elite Athletics. Again, that's Muscular Elite Athletics. I'm based out in Kansas. So if you like these videos, if you want more knowledge, please go over there, like my page, share my post. I really appreciate it. If you guys want a specific video and want to see, uh, comment below. Again, until next time, peace.